Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. You don't even say, hello, how are you? And she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorney. I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country. Uh, what exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is. Anybody that has a job. All right. Former President Donald Trump thrust himself back into the spotlight dominated by his new Democratic rival on Wednesday, making a series of inflammatory comments. He questioned Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity, falsely claiming during an event with black journalists that Harris was Indian all the way and had suddenly become a black person. Trump also fueled suggestions that Harris might not deserve her position, implying she could be vice president due to efforts for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Additionally, he criticized one of the event's black moderators as very rude, turning the event into a spectacle that could shift attention to his own 2024 White House campaign. President Joe Biden's withdrawal from the presidential race and the party's swift unification behind Kamala Harris, the first Indian American and black vice president, has revitalized the Democratic base. Harris is enjoying a surge of media attention and campaign momentum marked by significant fundraising totals and a well-attended rally in Atlanta on Tuesday night that drew a much larger crowd than typical Biden events. This shakeup within the Democratic Party has unsettled Trump's campaign, pushing the former president into the background after months of dominating the headlines. ABC senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott, Semaphore political reporter Kadia Goba, and Fox News anchor Harris Faulkner interviewed Trump for less than an hour in a wide-ranging conversation. Even before Trump's arrival, his invitation to speak at the convention had sparked opposition from some NABJ members. Despite this, NABJ defended their decision to host Trump, stating in a press release that they are currently in discussions to arrange an interview with Vice President Harris. Here are key takeaways from Trump's NABJ interview. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. The former president questioned Harris's racial identity, suggesting during the interview that she initially only emphasized her Indian heritage, but happened to turn black. Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much, and she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody a... should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. Trump said when asked if he thought Harris was on the Democratic ticket solely because she was black. Harris is both black and of Indian descent. Harris attended a historically black college, joined a black sorority, and was a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Questioning Harris's racial identity is certain to provoke outrage, something Trump thrives on. He first gained political prominence through another racially charged crusade, promoting the false birtherism theory that former President Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States. The task of perfecting our union moves forward. The former president was also asked about Republicans labeling Harris a DEI hire, a term that has drawn accusations of racism. DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really have don't said? Know. I mean, I really don't know. Could be, could be. There are some, and there are uh, plenty. I know this. Several Republicans, including Representative Tim Burchett and Harriet Hageman, have used the term regarding the vice president. Burchett later expressed regret for using it, but argued it was the truth. 
Well, I think she's one of the weakest candidates I've ever seen in the history of our country. Uh, I, I mean, intellectually, just really kind of the bottom of the barrel. And from the standpoint of just uh, who she is and the policies, the positions that she's taken, uh, her failure to do anything in terms of the border, that sort of thing, I think it's just a failure from top to bottom. Uh, I think she was a DEI hire, and I think that that's what we're seeing. And I just don't think that they have anybody else. I just think that they're in real disarray. Asked about Trump's comments on Harris's racial identity, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told reporters that his remarks were repulsive and insulting. As a person of color, as a black woman who is in this position that is standing before you at this podium behind this lectern, what he just said, what you just read out to me is repulsive, it's insulting, and you know, no one has any right to tell someone who they are, how they identify. That is no one's right. It is someone's own decisions. Uh, it is, uh, I'll add this, only she can speak to her experience. Only she can speak to what it's like. She's the only person that can do that. And I think it's insulting for anybody, it doesn't matter if it's a former leader, a former president, it, it is insulting. And we have to put, she is the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, we have to put some respect on her name, period. From invading our country that are taking, frankly, a lot of problems with it, but one of the big problems and a lot of the... During the interview, Trump mentioned a term he has used in the past, black jobs, and was asked to define it. I will tell you that coming, coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You Trump said during the convention before one of the moderators stopped him to ask what a black job was. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is, anybody that has a job. All right. And Mr. they're taking, President, they're taking I... the employment away from black people. They're coming in and they're coming in, they're invading. It's an invasion of millions of people, probably 15, 16, 17 million people. I have a feeling it's much more than that. The former president also used the term during his first debate with President Biden in June. The border. They're taking black jobs now, and it could be 18, it could be 19 and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs and they're taking Hispanic jobs, and you haven't seen it yet but you're gonna see something that's gonna be the worst in our history. Amazing. <laughs> Greetings, Milwaukee. Trump was compelled to defend Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate, as the Ohio Senator faces criticism over some of his past comments. Vance has been under fire, particularly for previously stating that the U.S. has been run by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. What I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question and propose that maybe if we want a healthy ruling class in this country, we should invest more, we should vote more, we should support more people who actually have kids, because those are the people who ultimately have a more direct stake in the future of this country. <laughs> when asked about Vance's comments, Trump defended his running mate. He strongly believes in family, but I know people with great families. I know people with not great families that don't have a family. And the people without the family are far better. They're superior in many cases, okay? He's not saying they're not. What he's saying is that he thinks the family experience is a very important thing. It's a very good thing. But that doesn't mean that if you grow up and you grow older and you don't meet somebody that would be wonderful to meet and would have been good, that that's a bad thing. He's not saying that. He, my interpretation, you'll have to ask him, actually, but my interpretation is he's strongly family-oriented, but that doesn't mean if you don't have a family, uh, there's something wrong with it. Just the former president was also pressed on why he chose Vance and whether the Ohio senator would be ready on day one. Trump appeared to downplay the importance of his choice in his response. Donald Trump, right? I'm a never-Trump guy. I never liked him. Donald Trump is the 
dumb redneck candidate that these dumb racist rednecks deserved all along. And look, those, those, we've got to deal with those dumb idiot Trump supporters. The back and forth came as some Republicans suggested Trump made the wrong pick with Vance. I've always had great respect for him uh, and for the other candidates too. But I will say this, uh, and I think this is well documented, Historically, the vice president, in terms of the election, does not have any impact. I mean, virtually no impact. You have two or three days where there's a lot of commotion as to who, like you're having it on the Democrat side, who it's going to be. And then that dies down, and it's all about the presidential pick. Uh, virtually never has it mattered. Maybe Lyndon Johnson mattered for different reasons than what we're talking about, not for vote reasons, but for political reasons, other political reasons. But uh, historically, the choice of a vice president makes no difference. You're voting for the president, and you can have a vice president who's outstanding in every way, and I think J.D. is. I think that all of them would have been. But, but you're not voting that way. You're voting for the president. You're voting for me. If you like me, I'm going to win. If you don't like me, I'm not going to win. In addition to defending Vance, Trump also had to defend his history of aggressively supporting the police following another police shooting of an unarmed black individual. Trump has called for giving police officers immunity from prosecution. An Illinois officer has been arrested and charged with murder after killing Sonia Massey in her Springfield home when she called for help. Why should someone like that officer have immunity, in your opinion? Immunity? Uh, immunity. I, I don't know the exact case, but I saw something and it didn't look, well, it didn't look good to me. It didn't look good to me. Uh, are you talking with the water, right? Yeah, well, it didn't I mean, police unions are not backing this person okay, either. Okay, yeah. Pressed on whether the officer should receive immunity, Trump said. I guess they're charging the officer. So why should he receive immunity? Well, he might not. I mean, it depends. It depends on what uh, happens. I'm talking about people that are uh, much different cases. Than President Barack Obama saying that they were not born in the United States which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American. Trump's interview turned heated almost immediately once Scott began asking tough questions. The back and forth between the two often grew tense during the conversation. In her first question, Scott listed remarks Trump had made to or about black people and noted he had dined with white supremacist Nick Fuentes. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit Trump has dominated the news cycle for much of the election, with daily coverage of his criminal trial and the flurry of attention following the assassination attempt against him. This culminated in a convention widely seen as a messaging success, where Trump appeared with his bandaged ear and received adulation. However, the former president hasn't been the focus of campaign coverage since Biden stepped aside, and Harris emerged as the front runner for the Democratic nomination, with her vice presidential pick expected within days. Trump has tried to regain attention, repeatedly attacking Harris to no avail. Trump has long shown he's willing to go further than other politicians, and his latest comments are part of a pattern of escalating controversy. Donald Trump spoke at the annual meeting of the National Association of Black Journalists. And it was the same old show. The divisiveness and the disrespect. And let me just say, the American people deserve better. The American people deserve better. The American people deserve a leader who tells the truth, a leader who does not respond with hostility and anger when confronted with the facts. We deserve a leader who understands that our differences do not divide us. They are an essential source of our strength. 